Hello friends, Abby Jo here welcoming you to the channel. Today's video I'm showing you our DIY pantry and my favorite granola recipe. When I was looking for bookshelves or display cases that would work for a portable pantry, I was looking for deep shelves that could display my canned goods and my baking goods so I could be in the kitchen and I could see what I need and just come in there and get it. And these were just like, they fit the bill. I love it so much. The deep shelves, open area, some nice little features so that it has a door on the bottom with a cabinet door and you can actually put stuff in there that you don't want to see. Like I keep my Instapot my big Instapot canner, I keep my crock pot and my, just all my little hand tools and stuff that I don't use on the counter all the time. I put them down there and they're nicely tucked away so I don't have to look at them. And it just works out so great. These cabinets were just the perfect fit. And what was really nice about these was we were not using this patio slider door and I still wanted light to come through. So they were just the right size that there's still a light gap that comes through, which is so beautiful. It comes in, shines on my wood cook stove. So it's not blocking out all the light, but I can you know, have my little pantry here. We are gonna add some more features to this portable pantry. We're gonna be adding in some butcher block right here to make a little counter area where I will have my grain grinder and be able to kind of have a setup for grinding all my grains. And it's gonna look really pretty and it's gonna have a place for everything. I'm gonna have some hooks in the upper wall area where I'm gonna be able to hang all my cheeses so they can drain into a bowl. So it's just gonna be a really cool kind of pantry and work area. And that's our next thing that we're gonna be doing and I'll definitely be showing you. One little fun feature I love in these cabinets is there's this little knob right inside and you click it and there's lighting. So you have like lighting through here, glass shelves that kind of show it off. I find that when I can actually see my canned goods, I use them more. I'm always looking like, oh, I can have some peaches for our dinner tonight and add some applesauce or get out the garlic for the baked potatoes, make some tomato sauce with the tomatoes. It's just nice being able to see part of my canned goods. I have more in my bigger pantry, but this is kind of like my display and it's pretty. And I also feel that it kind of inspires me to cook. Another thing that I love is this bottom shelf and it's so handy is keeping all of my baking items right here. I use them day in and day out. I was walking into my other pantry all the time, going back and forth, back and forth, not always knowing where did I put the cocoa powder? Where did I put the baking powder? Where did I put the baking soda? Where's the sugar? Where's the coconut? So this stuff that I use on a real regular basis for for my baking goods and everything. I keep them right here and it's so handy now to see them. Very visual person, so I really like my baking shelf. I'll also show you this cute cabinet here. And you can see how much I can get in to this cabinet. I didn't paint the inside, but there's my crock pot and plastic wrap, my um, waffle iron and all my good stuff there. Food processor, so handy show you this side too. Right here is my large digital pressure canner and then I put my Instapot right there. Right now I'm actually currently getting ready to use my Instapot but it's so handy. I love keeping like fresh fruits and my oils right here and honey and avocado oil and my apple cider vinegar just stuff that I use on a daily basis but kind of has a spot and then more canned goods, my bread proofing baskets are really handy to have right here. And some of my bowls that I like to use on a regular basis that are pretty and you can actually visually see them. Our house has been in a constant rearranging as we still continue to finish the remodeling process. We still have little nooks of tools, supplies and storage that gets moved around a lot, but slowly we're getting it all done. I got both of the bookcases on sale half off, so I ended up paying $62.50 for each one. I love the Benjamin Moore Historic Collection. This blue looks so good with my kitchen colors. My husband and daughter Nadia are the pro painters at our house.
Daniel is putting up a small rod that goes just to the bookcases so I can hang curtains to diffuse some of that light that comes in and to dress up the area. We still have lots of trim to finish here and there throughout the house. I needed to move several things on our wall where the cabinets were going, so we rearranged the area and hung some things by the wood cook stove. I really love showing off my beautiful copper pieces up on that shelf. We plan on replacing this door with an antique one, but have yet to find the right door. We will keep on looking for just the right one, and that's part of the fun of this whole process. I love how the can jars look all lined up with so many beautiful colors in the pantry cabinets. I have people actually tell me this quite a bit is that they don't really have pantry space for food. And I think this is a great alternative to making a DIY kind of repurposed pantry that's portable is using these cabinets. You can also use closet space. Maybe you have a door that um, has like an entryway closet that you come into and you're really not using it. Why don't you clean that area out, build in shelves, and then you'll have a little pantry. I just think it's really, really wise to have a good stocked pantry. They're just a really great thing to have for emergencies, for, you know, if you lose your job or, you know, electric outages during the winter. It's just wise. Like I think everybody should build up at least a three month supply of food that is always there. It kind of even helps to offset all these crazy prices and things that we deal with on a day to day basis. I've always felt that, you know, building up a pantry is just it saves money and it's wise and you really learn how to cook from your pantry, which I think even saves you more money when you go grocery shopping. So I find that repurposing like a bookshelf or like in this case display shelves and making them into a pantry area is just a really economical great way for me to add more pantry space to my house. And the closet is another great idea like I just said and cl closets tend to be cooler so you know being able to actually have some food and deep storage in your closet is a really handy thing. And I actually had a friend back in Idaho that didn't have any pantry and she turned all of her extra closets into pantry space. And I just thought that was so brilliant, you know, just kind of like turning and flipping the situation where, hey, I don't have anywhere to put my canned goods, so I'm gonna turn a closet space into an area. I've also heard people putting canned goods under beds and things like that. So you can get creative in making an area for a pantry. Another space saving hack that I use on a regular basis is baskets. They're just like what I use for keeping a lot of my fruit and vegetables. It's just a great way you can see what I have. So I love that. And you know, I, you want to keep most of your stuff out of the sunlight. It just helps to keep everything cool. And right now I actually have my oranges and my onions kind of right in this area where the sun goes, but I use them up so quickly that I don't have an issue and my kitchen stays pretty cool but definitely I keep the potatoes in the like darker area over here in the kitchen or I'll keep them even in my big pantry. So I thought we would make some homemade granola. That's a perfect thing to fill up the pantry shelves with. I always love to have a jar always ready, especially during the summer months because we eat a lot of yogurt, yogurt parfaits, you know, um, granola, like fruit bowls, all that kind of stuff. So granola is perfect thing to make. It's easy and it's all comes from really good pantry items and you mix it up and then you just toast it in the oven and it's really quick and easy and it's so much cheaper than buying from the store. I need to fill up my oatmeal jar because we go through oatmeal really quickly and it is empty right now. So I'm gonna first 
refill my oatmeal jar. I always keep oatmeal in a five gallon bucket, like to keep it full. And then I fill my big jar for using it on a you know day-to-day -day basis. So I'm gonna grab my five gallon bucket, have it right down here. It says oats and I put the date and that's how I store my oats in bulk. You can get a really good deal on organic oats and 50 pounds at a time through Azure Standard. And that's a great way to cut costs is just buying it in a bulk amount. As you can see, I have just emptied this bucket. We actually go through oats pretty fast because we eat oatmeal a lot and oatmeal cookies for the kids. They love that and we love making granola. So really, really easy just having a jar like this for like what I call my pretty jar. And I usually keep this down in my pantry or I have a little spot in my island where I keep jars. And I like to always keep them filled up with basics like oatmeal and sugar and flour and beans and lentils and things like that. So this recipe actually was developed by my daughter, Natasha, because for a little while she had a nut allergy, kind of when she was dealing with her gluten issues and everything. And so we had to kind of stay off nuts, but we still wanted granola. And we found that seeds in the granola kind of makes a lighter granola and it's just so tasty. So we use pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds for our granola mix and it just comes out really good. We also use chia seeds. Those are really fabulous. You can really add anything into your granola. We can have nuts now, um, but you know, it kind of saves money not adding a whole bunch of nuts because nuts are pretty spendy. I love having pecans sometimes in mine, so I will. But today I'm just gonna do a seed version for you guys, just show you how easy this is. And I'm gonna mix up all these basic ingredients from the oats to the different seeds to a fat, which I'm gonna use coconut oil and butter. The recipe that I use actually was just coconut oil that my daughter used for like a dairy-free, but now I use a butter and coconut oil. You can do whatever you want. And then some coconut and maple syrup for some sweetener and vanilla, or I like to use vanilla paste because I'm really addicted to this stuff. It's wonderful, the flavor is great. And that's it, and then after you're done toasting it in the oven, then you're gonna add any fruit that you want. You always wanna wait to add the fruit to the end so that it doesn't get all scorched and shrivelly. First thing that I'm gonna do is get the fats all melted, which I'm gonna use half a cup of coconut oil, half a cup of butter, get that all melted down, and then I'll add in all the dry ingredients and mix it all together and then add some sweetener. But before I do that, I'm gonna really quickly get some milk into my Instapot to get some yogurt going. I just rather have that going um, ahead of time so that it's all ready by tomorrow so we can have some delicious Greek yogurt. And watch out for that in the next coming video. I'm gonna show you guys how I make Greek yogurt super thick in the Instapot and all the lovely things that I make with it for the summertime from some treats to some good breakfast ideas. I'm melting the butter and the coconut oil together in my little copper pan so it's all ready to pour onto my granola mixture. All right, so we're gonna add all the dry ingredients right now. And that is six cups of these oats. And I've got old fashioned oats here. Two, three, four, five, and six cups of oats. This will make a nice big batch. Okay, we're gonna use these pumpkin seeds. If you don't want pumpkin seeds, you can add in nuts. Okay, and that's a cup of pumpkin seeds or else you can add in a cup of nuts.
All right, we're gonna add in half a cup of sunflower seeds. I've got a quarter cup here, so there you go. So are chia seeds. And we're gonna add in four tablespoons. We wanna add in all of the dry ingredients first and then we're gonna add the fat and the sweetener in after that. All right, and now we're gonna add a cup of coconut. I love coconut. So we'll always add coconut favorite. Okay, and then I'm going to add some salt here. All right, we're going to be adding in half a cup of maple syrup. Just kind of swirl it around there. And then we're going to add in our fat which is the coconut and the butter, all melted. Add in my vanilla paste, and I'm gonna be putting in two teaspoons of vanilla paste. I love adding vanilla paste to things. This bottle right here I got at TJ Maxx, and it lasts me forever, and I love it. It smells so good. And then you're just gonna stir this up really good. You wanna incorporate all of that oil and the sweetener. Just get it mixed really, really good. I just needed to stir that really quickly. These sheets are all ready to go into the oven. They smell so good. And you're gonna put them in the oven for 275 for about 45 minutes, just until it's nice and crispy and dry. A little longer, depending on your oven. And about halfway through, I'm just gonna turn the granola. After turning the granola and letting it cook a little longer, I'm gonna add about one cup of raisins to each batch. You can add whatever dried fruits that you prefer. And look at that, we have a beautiful batch of homemade granola.